Good morning. Glad you're with me this morning. Why would the latter rain be withheld? Very interesting section. Jeremiah 3, verses 1 to 5. They say if a man divorces his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man's, may he return to her again? Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return to me, says the Lord. Lift up your eyes to the desolate heights and see, where have you not lain with men? By the road you have sat for them like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. You have had a harlot's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. Will you not from this time cry to me, My father, you are the guide of my youth. Will he remain angry forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you were able. Just as the latter rain coming to God's people in the time of Jeremiah was essential for their spiritual completion, so off here in our time where we live, in the last days where we are, receiving the latter rain is essential for God to finish the spiritual work he is looking to do in us. If we can learn why the latter rain was withheld from Judah, we can apply that and make sure that we don't get into a space where the latter rain is withheld from us for the same reasons. So what is the latter rain? Well, the former or early rain would fall in the fall, October, about October, November in this area. And that was what was needed to get the harvest off to uh, get it off to a start. And then later in late March and in uh, April, roughly according, according to our way of keep timekeeping, that would be when the later season of rain would come, and that would make it possible for the crop to come to maturity and be harvested. And get this, both pieces, both, uh, both rain seasons were essential to having that harvest be able to be ready. And God was laboring mightily for them spiritually, especially through the prophet. What would they do with his word, with the word from God through his servant? Would they receive it? Would they reject it? Would they repent? Would they ignore it or try to kill the prophet? What would they try to do? And so this was one of God's major, major initiatives to get his people ready for that latter rain. Jeremiah's messages may seem, you know, harsh to us, but they're urgent, almost kind of like last chance type messages. And so Jeremiah's going to give them just as fully as he's told to give them. And these five verses outline the problem of Israel's situation. She has played the harlot. But God still calls her to return. A certain amount of faithfulness is necessary or the latter rain will be withheld. I mean, you know, the, for, the early rain has to do something or there's nothing for the latter rain to even work on. But these people refuse to be ashamed. And you can tell by the text, look at verses 4 and 5. Uh, will you not at this from this time cry to me, my father? You're the guy to my youth. They're trying for a superficial return. You know, will he remain angry forever? They're, they're looking for God to kind of just go ahead and give them, give them some freebies. But they have to, they can't do it superficially. They, their heart has to be in it. If our heart's not in it, you're not going to fool God. He's not going to dish out the latter rain to you when you're, when you're uh, playing games with him. So we need to be all ready to, to, to follow where God is leading us. And this is, a, this is a challenge right here for the nation of Judah. They need to turn in a deep, sincere way. What are they going to do? Well, we'll keep on, we'll keep on reading, but let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for watching over us. Uh, we hear a very urgent thing happening here with Jeremiah and his message to the people in that day. Lord, they, they feel rich and prosperous, but they're feeling kind of nervous because the big powers around them are on the move and they're not right with you. So Lord, we want to be right. We want to learn lessons from their mistakes. Help us to be in a receptive mode. Help us to be close enough to you that that there's even something for you to work on. Please, Lord, build up your people. Help us. Help us not to miss the latter rain in our day. Oh, Lord, we, we ask for you to be gracious and persistent with us and help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The same question lingers over our lives. Will we turn to him, turn to him deeply and fully so that he can actually give us a greater blessing? What will we do? Somber thoughts but still not a bad way to begin this day because this day you could be receiving the latter rain. God be with you today.